One of the Democratic Party's most religious men just delivered an epic takedown of Christian nationalism. James Tallarico is a divinity student who also holds a seat in the Texas State House, and he recently spoke about the MAGA worship of Donald Trump. Christian nationalists have taken Trump as their new Christ because he's everything the first one was not. Jesus was poor. Trump is rich. Jesus was meek. Trump is a bully. Jesus lost. And Trump is obsessed with winning. I honestly think that if Donald Trump and J.D. Vance met Jesus today, they would ridicule him as a single, childless hippie. <laughs> and in fact, in fact, Donald Trump Jr. explicitly rejected Jesus' Sermon on the Mount. He said, turning the other cheek has, quote, gotten us nothing. How did we get to the point where loving your enemy is weak and loving your neighbor is woke? I mean, they are literally rejecting the central teachings of Jesus because those teachings don't serve their own self-interest. As Tallarico points out, Christian nationalism is no longer about the teachings of Jesus, it's about the pursuit of power. And to answer his question about how we got here, there is a prevailing theory. It has to do with the ignorance and sheep-like behavior of so many people in America. Instead of actually studying and learning the Bible, many Christians in America prefer to express their faith by being part of a movement. And when others in a community or movement go to a Trump rally and are swayed by his charisma and charm, critical thinking and reasoning get thrown out the window. On paper, Donald Trump is the living, breathing symbol of blasphemy. But in person, Trump's words and salesmanship are far more compelling than biblical verses. And so Donald Trump himself becomes the way to promote Christian faith. Trump loves evangelical Christianity, so loving Trump for low-thinking Christians becomes the way to make America more religious, more faithful, and more tied to Jesus. And Trump plays his own role to the hilt. I know that you've said before that you've been sustained by the prayers of lots of Americans. I've seen pictures of people yeah. praying oh, over it's, you. It's incredible, actually. Her question is, um, she says, you've been faced with so much adversity and persecution for years. What's your relationship with God like, and how do you pray? That's Sharon from Alabama. Okay, so I think it's good. I do very well with the evangelicals. I love the evangelicals. And I have more people saying they pray for me. I can't even believe it. And they are so uh, committed and they're so, they're so believing. They, they, they say, sir, you're going to be okay. I pray for you every night. I mean, ev everybody, almost, I can't say everybody, but almost everybody that sees me, they say it. The question, though, was, what is your relationship with God? And Trump's response was, the evangelicals vote for me. They pray for me. Trump can't or will not cite a single biblical passage or anecdote about Christianity. And that underscores how deeply flawed he really is as a leader of Christians or of anybody else. Trump is all about Trump. That's all he cares about. And you would think his narcissism and shallowness would be clear to more religious Christians. But some Christians are just as empty and shallow as Donald Trump. And when you combine that with ignorance about Christianity, ignorance about America, and ignorance about America's Constitution, you get a lot of folks in MAGA world. Why would you take something as beautiful as America that we founded God on, we founded America on God. Why would you try to destroy that and take it out of the schools and try to teach our children well, something that's... That's what I mean about separation of church and state. That's, it is, shouldn't be, though. God should be... We should be able to say in Jesus' name, you know, and I, I don't care what, what religion you are, because if we unite and come together as all in one, they'll find the true God. You know, let's say I'm a Jewish dad and I send a Jewish kid, my Jewish daughter to school and she's made to pray to somebody else's God. Is that, do you see that as constitutional? 
if I was the father and I didn't want her to pray to somebody else's God, I would take her out of that school. But what if it's a public school? And I would take her out of the public school. And then what are his options? Homeschool. So if, you, so, so if you don't believe in Jesus, homeschooling is probably better? It's better. Why don't people believe in Jesus? You come to this country, accept our beliefs, accept what we are, accept who we are, or don't come. And that's not to be mean, it's just to say, don't come here and try to change our country to your beliefs. That's what I see them trying to do. You're trying to force something down our throat that we don't want. We'll welcome you here. We'll welcome you with open arms. Come here and embrace America. A Christian America, because that is all many of the MAGA faithful can envision. And even though Donald Trump has Jewish grandchildren and has been married several times and doesn't seem to ever go to church, in Trump, the MAGA faithful see a savior, a deity who can make America great again by eliminating the constitutional principles separating church and state. And the irony is that if the actual teachings of Jesus were taught in public schools, MAGA faithful would flip out. Because what Jesus promoted would in today's vernacular be described as socialism, helping the poor, feeding the hungry, welcoming the strangers. All of this is a reminder that this election is not just between Democrats and Republicans or between Christians and others. It's a choice between education and ignorance, between enlightenment and cluelessness. Donald Trump is hoping a significant number of voters remain ignorant and clueless. In fact, for Trump, widespread stupidity is his article of faith. By the way, a recent Trump live field rant got shut down by a fact check. Not far from here, the 4,000 person town of Charleroi. Does people, do people, oh, you know, Charleroi. In Charleroi, Pennsylvania, has seen a 2,000% increase in the population of their town. Do you know that, right? Actually, nobody knows that because it is not true. Check out that video at the link below. I'm David Schuster. Thanks for joining us.